The late great cultural theorist Stuart Hall distinguished between globalization from above and globalization from below. Globalization from above was imposed economically, militarily, and culturally with an attendant amnesia of empire, a homogenizing force. It drives the world towards injustice, conflict, and the polarization of wealth and resources. It moves freely and is without commitments and must be resisted. Globalization from below celebrates diversity, is people-led, makes alliance across differences. It leads to interdependence, attachment, commitment. It needs visible space on the ground as a dynamic place for people to live together, belonging to societies that are inclusive, pluralistic, multicultural and fair. Space on the ground where our collective knowledge, intuition and wonder at what's possible can come together and the participatory arts afford that. Blueprints exist of how societies can transition to low carbon futures. The Center for Alternative Technologies, who's getting ready for zero, needs to sit on every decision maker's table in Paris. But there's no collective map of how they're invented socially or how a cultural commons is created for the future we want and can find our place in. Drawing on patterns of belonging, empathy, kindness, community resilience, stewardship, reskilling, alternatives to limitless growth. The arts energize people's capacities for action, activate their skills, and transform their capabilities. These practices must grow resilient in response to the radical changes required to live within ecological limits. Their celebratory social spaces have power to build this resilience and reinvent us. They hold the things we care about, give us moments to begin again from, extend our imagination, collective courage, and knowledge we're part of a larger whole. Has public debate fully recognized the role the arts and culture play in accelerating, nurturing change for a sustainable future? Not quite. Yet these creative practices can draw on the perspectives of everyone to create a future we want to live in. Their metaphors, dreams, disruptions and symbolism provide that other space from which a new exploration of the self and the world can emerge and an unshakable belief that change can and does happen. In studies of systemic interconnectedness, the energy and resilience of a system are where connections and links are the strongest, participation, diversity, plurality and variability the greatest. The dualities of an adversarial culture fall away when contradiction and opposites are explored holistically, sorrow and gladness, isolation and connection, problems and solutions. Transitional arts practice simply manifests and gives expression to the participatory universe of which we're a part. So art has a purpose. It serves the restoration and celebration of life. Although, says Susie Gablick, the notion of art being in service to anything might be anathema. There's a plaque on the wall outside that says RSA for the encouragement of art, manufacturing and commerce. Encouraged carries the word cur inside it, heart. Making art as if the world mattered needs encouragement. For all its joys, it's not easy. It demands ingenuity, skill, generosity, humor, devotion even. But it's not going away. I feel it's arriving to play its full part. Thank you for inviting me to speak. I feel encouraged. Finding a way to belong on Earth is the most radical thing any of us can do, individually and collectively. When Felix Baumgarten jumped to Earth from a helium balloon 39,000 meters high up in the stratosphere recently, he said, I'm going home now. In an act of hubris in 1963, having just learnt to swim. I put the armbands I no longer needed onto my ankles. As I tried to right myself, flailing around with both feet in the air and my head underwater, I learnt there and then I didn't belong under the water. <laughs> Felix and I, in our own ways, were experimenting with the edges of the biosphere, the place on Earth where life dwells. 
Whilst sea creatures exist deep beyond the reach of the sun's rays, and there are birds nesting high up on ice in the Andes, most of the planet's species live just under or above the ground or in a top layer of the ocean. For humans, our comfortable home is the broad band of breathable air beneath blue sky, where the sunlight, water, soil, and materials we can make our homes from. Mars, Earth's planet neighbor, has evidence of water, but not green grass, whales, earthworms, pomegranates, rainwater, frangipani trees, forget-me-nots, or bees. Or, I might add, an abundance of citizen artists and artist citizens building connection to this planet, this pale blue dot, that's home, that's us. <laughs>